to it. Helps me, but... So, All right. Dr. Bill, you're talking about um, you did a buyer seminar, right? So tell us how you the, uh, tell everybody exactly the process that you you, you went through in doing that. All so, right. So it was the first time home buyer um, webinar that I conducted this past Tuesday. So I even prior to even um, you know starting, I I had already established a I guess a working relationship with a loan officer. And thanks to you, Jimmy, because you referred a couple of them to us. And I just kind of like liked the response that I was getting from one of them in particular. I um, mean, he had, I've, I'd referred few um, clients to him. I love the way he followed up with them. I love the way, you know, he, um, he was, you know, able to give me status updates at a moment's notice and stuff like that. So when it, um, for the uh, webinar that I conducted, I actually went through a company called Rico Demand. Okay. Um, and with the Rico Demand, they pretty much um, assisted me with, you know, setting up the, um, creating the, creating the, um, the flyer, creating the, um, I guess the social media, you know, announcements right. or whatever you want to call it, right. you know, they assisted with, you know, just setting up my dashboard so that if anyone, you know, um, uh, registered, it goes directly to a dashboard rather than just coming directly to my email and plugging up my email account. So they set everything up on um, on the back end. I so met them, quick, you know, like Dr. five Bola, different times quick. before, you know, the actual date. Real quick, um, let me just say this. So Leonie Maria, please make sure you take note of that. The company that she used, make the, you know, or, or do some research on companies that you can use to be able to get the information to get it going because what she's talking about here is extremely important on how to set up a way if you want to do what she did so sorry go on yes you know so yeah so they met with me they walked through the whole process each time we met prior to the um the actual webinar it was to actually work on to prepare for it was to prepare for the actual webinar um, a day before the, the webinar, I met with them again. They walked me through the whole process of, you know, um, how to use, the, um, to use the Zoom platform, which I'm pretty much familiar with. But for someone that's not familiar with it, you know, it would have been very helpful. So they walked me through the whole process. Um, and then, you know, um, it's very important, important to, for you to, you know, of course, you know, conduct, you know, the, the webinar in a, in, in a professional um, environment, right. make, um, work, working on lighting, the lighting and making sure everything is just looks presentable. And, and of course, you know, your first impression is a lasting impression. Right. Um, I reached out to um, the loan officer. I told him about the webinar and asked him if he would be interested in, in um, you know, partnering and, and participating with me. Of course, um, he did say, he said yes. And actually, I dropped the ball because I didn't follow up with him for about two weeks. Um, but he still remember the date <laughs> for some reason. He still remember the date I, you know, I gave him. And that's why I said, you know, this loan officer is, I mean, is it okay for me to mention his name? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yeah, that's Andrew Price. You know, this loan officer is, is is great because he's really good at following up. So he called me, I think it was like two days before, um, you know, the actual seminar. It was like, are you still are you still going to be conducting that this um, webinar? And I said, yes, you know, but I dropped the ball because I've not followed up with you. I've not provided you with the, you know, the, with the slides. You know, to cut a long story short, we were able to kind of like merge our, you know, um, information and he was ready, you know, to do the presentation with me. Um, an hour before the webinar, I, um, you know, I had everything set up, you know, and of course, you know, this Rico Demand um, company, they actually walk you through the whole process, how to engage, you know, the participants, you know, the type of questions that you can ask them just to keep everyone involved and engaged. So um, I think, uh, yeah, that was about it, you know, okay. um, there were 22 people that participated. That was awesome. Okay. So this is this is what I just want to highlight out of that. It's extremely important that you 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 partner up with a loan officer. As a realtor, you know, we talk about a lot of times where is your low hanging fruit or what is it that I can do right now? What where is my right now business that I can get, right? That I can begin to build my pipeline because that's all real estate is. You don't want to nurse one deal but you want to nurse multiple deals. You want to have something in your pipeline. So because not all of your clients will buy on the same day or will be ready at the same time. 
buyers are in different stages of their processes. So let's say you, if your goal is, which should be every real, real, uh, real, realtor's goal, have multiple buyers, have multiple listings, you know, those are the things that you want to do. So how do you do it? That's exactly what she's done. Partner up with a lender, build a relationship with a lender, have a conversation. Matter of fact, some lenders actually will have a place that you can use it. You could also partner with a, a title company to do the same thing that Dr. Bola just did, right? So the idea is you have a lender, you have a conversation, you guys meet up, whether through Zoom, have a conversation on what your goals are, what you want to do to be able to build a pipeline of buyers because they will be at different stages and levels of their readiness to purchase a home. Now, Andrew Price is extremely good. I work with Andrew a lot. Matter of fact, just a shameless plug here real quick. With your KV Core, you can actually do some things as well. And I think I've said this before. Get Make a list of two, three, or four lenders that you've had a conversation with, that you've done businesses with, that you're comfortable with. Get their information to KV Core so that they can plug them into your KV Core CRM so that when you get leads that come into your, your KV Core, you can actually, your, your lender will see those things and they will know. Andrew sees my leads that comes into my KV Core. I have three lenders that get leads from me when it comes into KV Core. Andrew is extremely good at seeing those leads and working them sometimes before I do. I've got three deals right now and leads, leads and deals right now in my KV Core that Andrew has already spoken to them, he's already established rapport, and then he sent me an email, Jimmy, you need to follow up with this person, this is what we talked about, this is what we talked about. It's important because when you do that, you have a lender that is working for you. That's why your business is not going to run dry because you have people working with you and working for you. Just the same way you reciprocate to them, right? So when you do that, then the next level is once you've done that with KVCO, then the next level is you talk to that lender, then you all can do a, a webinar on Zoom and they follow up. And then the idea is you begin to follow up with these people. You begin to, Dr. Bola, hopefully you have them on some kind of a drip campaign in your KV core based on your conversations with them. And another thing that I do is this, that I'm going to encourage you to do. Even though they might not be ready right now, they might not be qualified right now. Some of them might need, have credit issues that you need to work through or whatever it is, or they might just not be ready yet. Maybe their, their list is not expired yet. It's not expiring for six months or whatever the case is. You put them on a drip campaign. Hopefully, you will have a conversation with them and just roughly and say, hey, so what are you looking for? When we do make this you know, happen, are you looking for a town home? Are you looking for a single family home? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? What are important to you? Make notes of those things. Put those information in your KV core and just generally drip them properly on those kind of criteria that they tell you. I go as far as what part of town, what areas do you want to live in? If they give you those areas, you say, no big deal, Is we, we don't need to be so specific right now. I just want you to get ideas of what's available so that you're aware of what's going on in the market. Because when you do these things, what happens is you, your potential clients, they look at our properties, they see what's available, they know when open houses are available and they can go. And you train them and say to them, if you see an open house and you want to go, go right ahead. Just make sure you put my name down as your agent. And guess what? You don't even have to have signed an agency agreement yet. You just need to show the value of what you do and who you are in those conversations. I've had a webinar with you. You were invited. You had a great time. You got tons of information. Now, the next level is I want to do this for you. Let me start getting you properties for you to see. So you're aware of what, so that, that way, whenever your client is ready, they don't get sticker shock of prices in the market because they already seen properties that they kind of like, that is similar to what they told you, and they now know what the prices are. You know, when you do these things, people think the only reason why you do, why you drip people is because, you know, you don't want them to forget you or um, for whatever reason. But it's really because you're providing value and it's also going to make your life so easy when you guys actually go out 
and you now say, hey, I want you to sign an agency agreement. Now they see the value of what you've done for them and who you are. You've answered questions, you made yourself available, they can text you or call you or whatever the case is. So now when you now finally go out, you will find that you don't have to be showing 10, 20, 30, 40 properties before your client figures out or finds out what they want. So it can actually make your life so easy in the way you do your processes. So you need to have those processes in place. I hope that helps, you know, in talking about the next level or also how you can actually put something together with a lender that you can work with because this is all about your buyer consultation. It's all about providing value to your buyer. It's all about your buyer knowing what they need to do and what the next processes are. Any questions with that so far? Anything we need to drill in and answer in, in, in this webinar that Dr. Bola did or, or in the thing that we just discussed right now? So can I ask you a question, please? Yes, ma'am. So you mentioned, um, <laughs> I know that is a that was a yes, even though you were drinking, sorry about that. Yeah, so you mentioned that, you know, um, it can start draping them. Like I said, you know, there was one in particular that I spoke with that said, look, I'm very excited. I just signed my lease, you know, for 11 months in, in about, you know, when the lease is off, she wants to buy, period. Okay. Um, so do you, we, do you recommend, I mean, like, which of the drip campaigns can we possibly use right sure. now, even for those who are not ready yet? Would that be the year-long, um, what's Let's it called? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, potential buy. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's go get an idea right now. Um, can okay. you all see my screen? Yes. Yes, okay. sir. Hopefully, you see my KV Core screen, right? Are you yes. all seeing my KV yes. Core? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is this is my dashboard. So um, uh, it, I'm hoping that everybody knows. We, we're just going to do a test on just roughly. Um, actually, no, we don't even, to, let's take this guy for example. So when, when I talk about dripping them, right? So this particular, we're going to assume that this client right here is someone that was at your webinar, right? Even though this particular client, this came from one of my properties that is being boosted, right? But we're going to, it's the same process. Nothing is different. So they went to my website, they saw it and boom, the information is captured. This is what's going to happen in your KV core like the client that you're talking about, Dr. Bola, right? So what you do right away is once yes, you have an idea where this client is looking, right? Or they've given you some information. You go in there. This could happen two ways. Yes. If they went in through your website, based on what they, whatever they were looking at when they went into to your website, KV Core will assign some things to them. It will show you know, similar properties or whatever they're looking at. So that's one way of you actually being able to decide to drip them. Another thing could be you probably enter them manually based on the information right. that you gathered. You can ascribe certain things to it. But now let's look at on this particular, this particular client, just for clarity, this particular client looked on the property in DC and I know the range of this property. So if I'm going to set up a drip campaign for this client, I'm going to set it up on the fact that there are new client coming in, looking at properties, townhouses in that area of town. The next thing I could go ahead and do other than just, you know, dripping them on that is I want them to get some kind of introduction from me. I want them to have some kind of, you know, get to know Jimmy, get to know Dr. Mm -hmm. Bola, Leone, Maria type situation, right? So mm -hmm. the first thing that I'll do I, this person is in here. All this information is filled because they came into my website. So let's give them on the right hand side over here. You can see on my right hand side automatically KV Core because of the way I set up my um, when someone comes into a website, depending on how they come or where they come from, KV Core automatically assigns the conversion default and the default new lead. I need to go in and make sure that I'm not getting conflicting information. So I do this at least once a week. So, but I'm going to actually, let's go into this conversion. I can remove this. I can restart it. Like, you know, I can do anything I want to do here. I'm actually going to remove that. 
But let's go in here. Let's just oh, let me cancel. So what you do is you come into your active campaign. Now there's a step before this because in your active campaign you need to have already you know make sure that the wordings are good, everything is the way you want it to be before it starts to go out. But you come over here in active campaign based on how they come in. KV Call would have assigned to them that campaign. So to answer your question directly on your particular situation, this person came in and you already knew, assuming they went to your website, KV Call assigns them automatically, it calls them a new lead, right? Now, you can actually go into okay. what they, you can go into KV Call to look at what that campaign looks like and to see if you want to continue to use that campaign for them or not, right? That's the first thing. Okay. And I'm going to go show you how we do that. The second thing would be, I can come in here and add specifically what campaign I want to attribute to them. On this particular client of yours, you can choose that you want to assign to them the default contract renter or the default active renter. They have different contents in there, but this is where you will come in to assign those things. Does that make sense so far? Is everybody following so far? I fine. Okay. So you are kind of like breaking up, but I just wanted to know this. Are you selecting a renter because the person is currently renting? Because that's what your client is right now. They're currently renting, yes. And the reason why I'm selecting that is because there's certain things in that there's certain things in that campaign. Now we're gonna go into the campaign and have a look. There are certain things in the campaign that may apply to them and th things like that. And that because of their current status, their renters, that's the reason why I want to select that. Because there's some things in that campaign that will help them. But that's the reason for that. But this is how you do it. You come over to active campaigns and you can add the campaign. Okay? That's one. Now, let's, go, let's get out of here. I want to show you those campaigns because that's really what is important. Because you need to spend time here to know what your campaigns look like. That way you're not just, you know, just throwing everything everywhere and hoping something sticks. Because if it doesn't make sense to someone when they see your email or whatever, they can easily lose interest. Everybody can see my, where it says marketing on the left-hand side? Yes. yes sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you move over here, you see where it says smart campaigns. Click on smart campaign. When you click on smart campaigns, you notice over here, some of them are, are they, 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 they highlighted they're in blue. It means I'm using those campaigns, right? That's what that is. So these are your default campaigns. It says my campaigns okay. up here. This is your KV Core library. This is where all your campaigns are. There's a class in there, a two minute quick video that tells you what to expect or what to look for and actually out, tells you how to edit and to build your campaigns, right? But real quick, so you come into your, this is where you're gonna land. You come into your KV Call library and it tells you, do you wanna add those things, right? You can add them to your library. But to show you what we're talking about, I've already added most of these, I have templates on there. You can recreate templates. Everybody, every single one of us, we have this. You absolutely have this already. So you, you, there's nothing that you need to do except for you to come in here and have a look and see what's in there and change wordings if you need to. To give you an example of what we were talking about just a few minutes ago. A few minutes ago, we were talking about the default. So let's look at the default um, um, renter, for example. She says default prospect renter. If you're prospecting, when you were talking about you want to go to certain places to find out, you know, um, target a particular neighborhood where there are renters in 2000 to 4000 range, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you have a marketing campaign over here. Just quick, real quick, you can come over here, you see this campaign, you can clone it, right? Let, if I click on that clone, right? It, tell, it shows you exactly here, first of all, what the campaign is. It says, hey, wait, in parentheses where it says first name, you don't need to do anything over there. It's going to automatically insert the client's name once you have this set up. So you don't need to do anything, anything in parentheses. It's going to automatically insert your name in there, where it's in parentheses as well. 
But over here it says, hey, if I don't like the word hey, I can change that. I can just say hello, right? I can change that. It's been a week since I first heard, since I first reached out about moving away from renting. I'll, I'll try you by phone later. What time works? I can change that and say, I don't like that. That doesn't sound like me. I can just say, hello, Jessica, whatever her name is. It's been a week since we, we last spoke. You know, you can change this. It's been a week since, you know, since we last spoke. I was, sorry, I was wondering if you will like to have a quick chat in the next day or two, right? Um, simply, simply text, simply text me at, sorry, I, I'm not, good, I'm not good at typing, so, 1068, at your convenience, right? You can just do that, and you remove everything else, you know? Whatever it is, you know, you, you, this is just, but you do this, you clone in this, I'm gonna remove all that, because this is just a quick test just to show you. So boom, I do all that, and I click on it. I want, if I, this is a text, so I don't want to include my signature. So pay attention to things like that. On your email, you want to. But just do like that, simply and say, clone. Once I clone that, look at what happens. When you go all the way down to that, you will see, it's cloned, if I can find it. Uh, I can't see it again. Uh, default, uh, okay, yeah, there you go, sorry, there you go. So it's already cloned. So that's cloned, it's done. That's all you need to do, right? So you can do that and clone all your stuff. Then you can come to the library over here and add any, if I wanna add, uh, you know, again, default prospect renter, right? I can add that to my library. See what over here where it says 13? Does everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So we have yes. default uh, prospect renter. It tells you system default for renter. It's going to be 13 touches. It's going to be email, text, connect, call, and tasks that it's going to give you. You can click on that. If you click on that, these are all those 13 touches. Then you can go into each one of those things, you view it and see exactly what it's saying over there. If you don't like this, you can edit each and every one of these things to make it sound what you want it to sound like. So this is what it is. And it tells you clone the campaign. So you can come in here and you can do exactly that to each and everything. And once you do that, you're done. And then all you gotta do is, ah, I hate it because of the, the way this thing is. I need to move this screen because I can see because I can't see anything down there. Okay. So, so you go over here, so you can edit each, everything. It tells you your tasks too. You, when you need to call them, the email that is going to send, you can view that email. If you don't like the email, you can make changes to this email if you don't like them. Right? So you can clone each, everything over here and do what you want. Once all of that is done, that's when, Okay, good. So once all that is done, you you know, you say it's clone campaign, right? This is it. This is how you easily simply do every single thing you want to do. You know, lead, you want to assign it, is it every time the lead is new that it comes in, you want it to be? Yes, I want it anytime a new lead comes in that is a renter, I want you to do that. You know, um, I do not want a start trigger. When you say you don't want a start trigger, it means it's not going to automatically trigger when they when something comes in, you know. I, I I want it to. You can even add a trigger to it, and it tells you what kind of a trigger do you want. Is it when someone when it's a new prospect, when it's a new lead? So it will trigger that campaign, depending on what you do. And then you tell it, do you want to always run it when a renter comes? Yes, you know. You do next. Um, what's 
going on here. I can't see. Sorry about that. I need to be able to see. Okay. Um, what do you say? I need to be able to see what I'm not doing. And that's the other thing about this thing. You can break it. You cannot break it. Meaning, it will tell you if you're doing something wrong. It says, missing triggers. You must define at least one start trigger or opt out, right? So, add the trigger to it. I didn't select one. So, my trigger is, what? what is my trigger that I want to use? Um, is it when it's uh um, is it when it's assigned to a lead or is it um, when the status changes? What's the status change? A new lead comes in. I want these triggers to run. And boom. I click next. You must select uh, at least one start trigger. Okay. Ah, come on. Oh, our, uh, our session is going to end very soon. Sorry. Um, let me get that out. So now it's done. I want it to happen for renters. It's because I had two fields open. I want it to be for renters. Next. Then there. It's boom. Always running. Yes, yes. Next. And see what it says here. Anytime I have a new lead and it's a new lead and they're renters, it's going to give this. It's going to run it. Finish. Done. I've added that to, to my campaign. That's it. It's very simple, very easy. I can see. Make my campaign active. So now it says this will allow all future actions to run for any lead assigned to this campaign. Boom. Yes. Done. That's all you need to do. You clone it. You add it to it. You're good to go. But again, the important thing is you want to make sure that you know and see what each one of those campaigns say so that you know you like what is in there. If you don't like what it says, you can go in there and you can edit See, when I clicked edit, I can come here now. I say, I, right, I've been helping a number of, I don't like all that. I can change that and say, you know, I can remove that just for it to sound like me. Whatever, you see that? Whatever you need to remove, you can easily go in there and do that. So once you change anything over here, that's what it's going to be. You save it and you're done. You can come in here and edit the text if you don't like the way it sounds, if it doesn't sound like you, if you want to add your phone number to it. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can do all of that. And once you do that, you add it to your campaign, you are good to go. Then you can go back to all your campaigns. So each time that renter, any renter comes onto your KV Core, they're going to get those campaigns. Every single person that comes awesome. into, my, into my KV Core, they get a personal welcome message from me. So you want to go in there and make sure that your welcome message is you know, sounds like you, is good the way you want it to be, so that every single time someone comes in, it triggers that. And, you know, they know what to do next. They know if you're telling them, expect a phone call from me in two, three days, make sure you call them in two, three days. Does that help? Does anybody have any questions? Yes, yeah. that? Yeah, sure. yeah, that really helps. Thank you so much. Okay. So, because I, I know our time is about, we have about seven minutes left. So, Next, any other questions? Any other thing that we, you would like us to touch on this? Ask your questions, please. On this matter or any other thing that is on your mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I don't really have a question, Jimmy, I guess. I, so my client that I was working on an offer for maybe three weeks ago, um, number one, her pre-approval has kind of fallen apart. And I had a real conversation with her of like, I don't think it's time to buy. Okay. She still wants to pursue buying. Okay. But there's no money. There's there's like, she does not qualify. She does not have a pre-approval. And so I'm at a point where I'm going to release her from the contract because I, I cannot be out here showing with no pre-approval. Like there's nowhere for us to go absolutely i agree um, you should you should not be showing property to any client if there's no pre-approval you have to say your parameters especially when you do your buyer consultation however let's try and delve in a little bit real quick what was the reason why you fell apart is it the income is it do they still qualify or they just don't have she doesn't money? she doesn't have money she spent the money okay but does she still qualify yeah. credit-wise um, I think the credit, yes, yes, I think the credit is fine. Um, but it will be a while. Before, I mean, she's not going to have like closing costs and down payment 
what is the lender the saying? What is the lender saying when you had the conversation with the lender? As far they as this, back, they they pulled back the approval because of the lack of funds. Okay, so because they do not have the money, was the reason why they pulled why the lender themselves pulled out. Right. Okay. Do we know roughly how much money that this client needs and how soon? Or how they don't. They, they don't even have enough for EMD, Jimmy. Okay. All right. So then you the the hard conversation needs to be had with them. I would not say release them. I will say have a hard conversation with them and it should go something like this. We know you can buy a house, but what's stopping you from buying a house right now is you need to have money. You if you don't have any money, we can proceed. And your lender is not willing to continue because you don't have that money. Now, maybe if they qualify for, even if they qualify for a Maryland mortgage program, an MMP that gives them some right. kind of money, even if they do, right. they still need some kind of money of their own. So the right. hard conversation I will suggest that you have with them is, I'll, I'll, I'm going to continue working with you, but I can't continue to show you a house. And I can't show you a house for the simple reason that we're just wasting our time and they're not going to take us serious when you're even ready to really put an offer out. That's where I love it. So you put the owners back on that so they don't think yeah. that you don't want to work with them. But don't. So I I've already, yeah, I've already had the hard conversation and she okay. wants to keep pushing. So her email to me was, will you continue to show me properties in Maryland? And I said, no, not without a pre-approval. There you go. And that's perfectly fine. Because they, they, they're not going to be able to buy. Then they, there's no reason. So, I mean, yeah. you can, I mean, if, if you feel that you're wasting your time and you want to release them, then do so. But, um, you know, if they're saying to you, I can get the money or whatever, say, well, show me the proof. But the re right now, it's not in anybody's interest to be showing you a property because it's going to hurt you. That's why I'll you put the owners back on the say, it's going to hurt you when you're really ready. And we, you know, and this keeps seeing you coming and you're not putting any offer in, it's going to hurt you. So when you're really ready, we don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize that. So right now, let's hold back. Let me continue to send you properties and keep looking at them on the computer. And I'll send you properties that, you know, that have open houses. You can go and look at them. But for me, I don't need to come with you and show you any houses. I don't need to come to any open house with you. And I cannot continue to show you any houses because it's going to hurt you and my other clients if I keep showing you properties and we can't write offers. And until you know for a fact when you're going to have the money put together for you to be able to do it, it wouldn't matter. And I don't want to waste my time and waste your time. I need to be able to dedicate more time to my other clients who are ready now. Yeah, that's where I'll have the conversation. Uh, you you might not want to have it through an email just because, you know, you don't want it to be something that, you know, they can say, oh, no, you told me, you know, I don't know. But that would be my kind of take to that. I wouldn't do it in an email. I just have a conversation. And I think that's good that, you know, you told them, right, you know, very simple, clean, straightforward. No, I'm not going to show you any more properties until you're ready. Yeah. But it's just that, that that long explanation that I gave, I wouldn't put that in an email. It'd just be a conversation. Because there's no point you wasting your time, energy, resource, all of that, where you could be doing other things. They have to be they have to demonstrate that they're ready, they're able to actually purchase. Otherwise, they're wasting your time and you don't want that. We have questions. Minutes. I have a question, Jim. Yeah. Maria, thank you so much for bringing that up. You make me to remember, to remember that I should ask this question because the, the customer that I'm working with, he's also having a problem with his uh, credit score. And I asked him uh, what could be his credit score. He said that uh, he checked it a couple of months ago. It was 620. Leonie, let me, let me, because our time is going to cut off, we might have to have this conversation outside of this. But one thing is this. When clients tell you what their credit score is, that's all nice and great. But the thing is, just telling me your credit score does not mean you can buy a house. Yes. Someone can have an 800 beacon score, but maybe they have one trade line. So always, when anytime they tell you, they say, let's connect you to a lender, let the lender get you pre-approved. -pre 
Otherwise, there is no point in us going out to go and look for houses. You want to put them in a position to win and to succeed. So that's why it's important that you have that conversation and connect them to a lender. This is going to cut us off um, momentarily. But I just yes, want to know. Yes, we, 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 we were working for the, on the rent to own, and he hasn't filled out the application yet. Yeah, don't waste your time if the client is, if they, they, that's why they're customers. They need to become clients. Clients okay. means they have to have an agency agreement. Client means they need to listen to what you're guiding them to do so you can put them in a position to win. Sure. Thank so you. You want to make sure that they do that. Get them to either sign an agency agreement, most importantly, get them to be connected to a lender so that you can make, the, you can help them to win as opposed to they just moving you around and nobody.